Hi, Charlie Kosorek, Jack Bench Woodworking, and today I am on location in Sonoma County with Michael Cooper. Hey, Charlie, how uh, are you doing? I'm doing terrific. Thanks so much for having me out here. Um, Michael Cooper is just a world-class sculptor, got some of the coolest stuff I've ever seen. And today what he's doing is he's going to give me a tour of his shop here. Uh, you've got what, about 2,000 square feet? Yep, that's about it. Excellent, excellent. Man, what a great, great space and fantastic tools. Um, so Mike, why don't you tell us a little bit about your shop and what you've got in here? Okay, well, uh, I'm a sculptor. And I, while I do a lot with wood, and I have sort of a full complement of wood tools, mm -hmm. I also have a TIG welder for doing a variety of metals, uh -huh. and uh, pretty much a complete machine shop and sheet metal okay. shop. Okay, sheet metal too? Yep. Wow, so you got a break and... Break, a shear, uh, press break, uh, rollers. Okay. Yeah. Wow, great. And the machine shop, you've got a lathe and... Mostly a lathe and a mill, and uh, they're both really good quality Excellent, pieces. excellent. Yeah. And then around the shop, I mean, we'll, we'll go over and we'll look at these individually, but you've got this massive, beautiful, old-time bandsaw there. How old is that thing, do you know? I think it's from the 30s. It was uh, in the Pan American uh, machine shop or uh, repair shop before the airline went out of business. Pan Am Airlines, that was, a, that was a while back. Yeah. And, and what is it, it's got to be a 25, 30 inch throat on that? 36. 36 inch, that's a nice bandsaw. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm looking here, I see a, a, is that a big wide belt sander? Yeah, that's about a 43 inch time saver. Uh-huh. And now I've got a little one, a little jet, so, you know, the two are Great, co great compliments. Uh -huh. The jet will go down to a thirty-second of an inch, <laughs> which I've That's, used. I and I've got one just like it, and it's a great machine. I, uh, yeah, made thin stuff out of it. Uh, big, big spindle sander, smaller spindle sander. Um, there's some kind of a mill over here? No, that's a radial drill press. Uh, okay. Actually, I think I've got eight drill presses. <coughs> <laughs> oh, come on, only eight? Don't you, why don't you need a couple more? How do you get by with eight drill presses? <laughs> well, you don't need that many, but I'm a tool junkie, and uh -huh. uh, when I see a real good deal like that, uh -huh. I thought, well, okay, if the vice goes with it, I'll pay $500. Uh, okay, yeah, and vices, you've got nice vices. And one thing that uh, you mentioned to me when I was in here yesterday, you were telling me that, um, all of your work surfaces, or most of your work surfaces, are adjustable height, too. Yeah, I started with a table that I made probably 45 years ago, and it has a very small gear motor, uh -huh. which runs chain to both screws that uh, raise and lower the table. Uh -huh. It was just fun, but it takes about 10 minutes for it to get up a <laughs> foot. But I've got a hydraulic table that was uh, out of an auction. that goes from about this level to about this level. Wow, so about a four-foot range on it. Yeah, and it's uh, at least <coughs> 2,000, uh, I'm sorry, two-ton capacity. Uh -huh. And this is a little motorcycle lift with a large piece of plywood on it. And this goes up by air and, uh, you know, it just saves your back a little bit. Having the work at the right elevation it absolutely it saves your back. I agree yeah. with you hundred percent. And then uh, before we uh, start walking around the shop, we'll walk around. We'll look at all of these things. But uh, before we do that, uh, one of the things I wanted to mention is you got these massive discs. Are those both big disc sanders? Yeah, those are both made by Max Manufacturing, which was down in San Jose. Uh huh. And I got to know the owner of the company because I wanted a spindle sander, sander of theirs, but I couldn't afford it. Uh huh. So I got the individual spindles and was trying to uh, transform my big old uh, drill press into a spindle sander. Uh huh. It worked out great until I brought it up to speed, and then it was too much speed for the Babbitt bearings. Uh-oh. So as it turns out, I went back to talk to him about it, and he said, you know what, we just had a machine that came back after a, a customer had it for a week. He said, uh, it's making a little noise. He, he said, we took it up, apart, and we couldn't find anything. We put it back together, and it's right here. Would you like to see it, and we'll run it for you? And I said, sure, and he gave me a great deal. Right. And we got to know each other over a period of time, and he knew I taught school, and uh, he was 
He was a gentleman's gentleman. He okay. was uh, like you. Nice guy. <laughs> he started out though in the uh, foundry business where uh -huh. they were a pattern shop and a foundry. And these big sanders over here, the one is a 30 inch and the other is a 24. Uh -huh. They uh, started making a couple of tools just for their foundry. Uh -huh. And then people would come in and see these tools and say, well, could you make me one? So they ended up being in the tool manufacturing business as well. Okay. So they were a pattern shop, a foundry, and they manufactured a, a, quite a few different woodworking tools. Okay, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's take a walk around and look at some of these things individually, especially in that machine shop. Um, so let's do that. So Mike, this is, this is your uh, big bandsaw that we were talking about a second ago, so tell us about this. Well, this is the one I got from Pan Am, um, but uh, anyway, it's called Mr. Horsepower now. It's got the biggest motor I've ever seen on anything. It's yeah. 36 inches in here, and it does about 14 inches in height. Wow, and you've got, what is that, about a quarter inch blade on there? Yeah, that's a quarter inch blade, but it'll cut anything I need, and right. uh, that blade has been on here for, gosh, way, way, way too long. It's yeah. probably got two or three years on wow. it, and it's still just cut that inch and a half aluminum like butter. Holy smokes. <laughs> so, can we fire it up? Sure. Let's we'll, do it. We'll give it a shot. Yeah, baby! <laughs> I love it! All right! Cool! <laughs> it feels like a fan right here. There's so much momentum with the wheels right. that it pulls air down and just uh, cools you. Holy smokes. It's a better saw for the summertime. That's, that's a nice machine. <laughs> Holy smokes. That blade is old. Yeah. Well, if you just cut that aluminum with it, it must not be that bad. Yeah. Oh, man. Isn't that okay. a great sound when it oh, that's, kicked oh, that in? I love that. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. All right. Um, well, we're right here. Maybe we just point out this bandsaw. I mean, it's an old Delta or something. this point I think these might be more hassle than they're worth. Maybe just shut them off. I mean it, I think it's a little I think the more cameras gives a higher quality interest but it can get carried away too. Yeah. <laughs> so Pretty good. Okay, Mike, so now you've got this little smaller 14 inch or so old Rockwell yep. bandsaw and another uh, disc sander here. So how many disc sanders do you have? Three. Only three? Yeah. How do you get by? Well, I have belt sanders too. Ah, compensate for your lack of extra disc sanders. <laughs> that's, that's the homemade job here. And uh, gosh, that is the oldest tool in the shop. But I put a big motor on it and, you know, it's still the workhorse around here. Uh -huh. Plus it's easy to change disc and that one definitely needs changing. Yeah. yeah it's coming apart. Okay. Well, while we're on the sander track, let me see, you've got a nice, speaking of belt sanders, you've got a nice belt sander back there. Okay, Mike, so you got this big uh, belt sander here. Yeah. You make some sparks? Yeah, let, right. me, let me show you a couple things about this. And this is one, I bought many of these tools in here, well used uh, from people who are retiring in some cases, auctions. Sure. You know, you, you try to find deals. Right, right. Well, you can see how hard it is or how easy it is to change Super easy. belts and then you can track it right here. Yeah. Now, why I like this is that changing the belt is so easy, but look at what you can do with this thing.
It's truly a workhorse. And uh, you can change belts so quickly to go from different grits. Yeah, look how much. So this is 3 8 inch maybe? No, that's half by one steel bar. Half inch bar, he just rounded it off just like butter. Yeah, a disc sander, you know, you could uh, basically almost uh, dull your disc. Mm -hmm. But these are so much longer, and this is zirconium, uh, it just lasts a long time. Wow. Terrific, nice machine. Yeah. Now I gotta have one of these. And I paid $100 for this. I want mine for 50. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Wow, that is an amazing hunk of welding machine. Well, it's kind of like the bandsaw. It's big and old, and uh -huh. uh, there's almost nothing that ever does go wrong with it. Right. Uh, like most of the tools here, it's used, right. well used. But this is a TIG welder, and a TIG is my favorite way of welding because it's just so clean. All uh, high-performance vehicles are welded with a TIG. Uh -huh. The welds are tiny and very, very strong and also beautiful. Mm -hmm. And part of the thing I love about my shop is I can machine something, I can weld something, and it might be for a wood project, but uh -huh. I can do all of it right here. Yes. So it's yeah. just awfully... Very handy. Handy and it's fun. I'm not even going to try to guess how many hammers you've got around here. Well, uh, when I was doing the hot rod, yeah. I did get a few more. And, uh, you know, you use sandbags for sheet metal work because you pound a lot into, on your metal, on a sandbag, and that bag oh. helps to kind of centralize and move the metal sure. uh, in a controlled way. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, and uh, just yeah. works out. Yeah, all right. And another nice belt sander back here. Yeah, that one I made to be vertical, that's a, that's a jet. Uh, that was a horizontal one, but when I got the Ritter, that became the, the horizontal one, and this became a vert vertical one which can be tilted. Sure. You and another a little table saw. Little table saw. Now, why do you keep that one around? Just for... I can carry it around outside or ah. do anything that okay. is tiny. Yep. Little blades, so you yeah. only get little cuts. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And you got a, a really, I've seen the handheld bandsaws before, but that one is different. This is very different, and uh, you might like to see this too. This is a, uh, like many, uh, I think we're all familiar with the bandsaws that used to be about hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah. I don't know what they are now. But this one is made in Italy, and it's terrific. Um, I saw it demonstrated at a car show, and it was cutting slivers of metal that were just perfectly straight. Yeah. And uh, it's no joke. And one of the beauties of this is this can tilt up to 60 degrees. Most saws, if they will move, it's up to 45. Okay. But uh, this is just amazing. That is a nice one. That blade has cut literally hundreds and hundreds of pieces of metal for the latest sculpture. All wow. of it on this for the most part. And then, of course, there's a couple more. Yeah. So. Happen to recall, how did something like that cost? This was $1,100. Yeah. It's not a toy, and it, but it looks like it. It's variable speed, so you can cut aluminum or steel, stainless steel. It's just fine. This is still the original blade, and that's, wow. you know, pretty nice. old now. Pretty nice machine. Another one for my list. <laughs> <laughs> Turn it. So you got this big radial arm saw back here. Yeah, this only comes out to cut a 24-inch panel. Oh, okay. So if you do have something bigger, you have to go to a bigger saw. Okay. Well, 24 carries a, goes a long ways. And you've got another uh, metal cutting bandsaw. Is that a reciprocating? Yeah, this is an old Racine uh, that I got out of a, I think I rescued it because uh -huh. it had a broken frame. But it's, you know, um, um, 
Right. I've never seen a reciprocating saw like that anyway. Not quite like that. Well, and it's hydraulic. The way it comes down, you can adjust the pressure uh -huh. on it coming down. Yeah. But it doesn't get used a lot, but I cut those four inch aluminum ingots okay. on here for the hubs. Sure. This one is a uh, variable speed cold saw. All right. And that will cut solid steel up to about four by six. Okay. And really precise. Oh. Uh, the beauty of it is it's two speed. You can cut stainless, mild steel, mm -hmm. aluminum. Um, great, great saw. The only drawback to a cold saw, it is using a liquid. Uh-huh. And uh, they're a little messy. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You've got this uh, little bandsaw here. <laughs> what is this? Well, this is a Powermatic 20 inch and it's a variable speed, but the beauty of it is with the two wood bandsaws that I have, mm -hmm. I strictly use this for metal. Uh huh, I run it real slow and. Yeah, and the nice thing is it has a blade welder on it. And so uh, from occasions, you know, you'll have a piece where you want to get into the center of something and you don't want to make a cut into the center. So I can drill a hole through wood or aluminum or what have you, uh -huh. snip the blade, put it through, bring it over to the welder, weld it, grind the weld, put it, the, way, the blade back on the saw, and away you go until you what finish the interior What a handy thing cut. to have that is. Very, very nice. All right, and I see you got another smaller belt sander here. A little. That's a little guy, but you know, it works out pretty nice, and it shakes like the devil. This is kind of for the in-between projects, because I have one more like this that's even smaller. Okay. You can never have enough sanders. And then you've got these two radial, well, what this you call is, them? Well, this is a, you know, the old Walker Turner radial drill press. Okay. Um, you know, I could have really used it 30 years ago a lot because of this deep throw. Sure. And uh, that's its main feature, and of course it's beautifully made with cast iron, even the base is cast iron. Uh -huh. So if you're a tool lover, you can't help but just appreciate all of that extra, right. you know, good work. Right. But this monster is truly unbelievable. Um, it's got a power head. This whole unit can raise and lower electric, and then this can move in and out uh, the down feed has two speeds. It'll drill any size hole you want. If you have a drill bit like that, no problem. Wow. Uh, this can be on or off, so the amount of depth is pretty huge. Uh, it's, it's just an amazing piece. Do you have a, a forklift, or how do you move some of this? No, stuff? I borrow a friend's. In fact, the friend I bought this from, he got two. You look at this way that moves. Wow. And Very it's, nice. It's just, Ooh. it's just amazing. Doesn't get used much, but when you need it, it's amazingly yeah. handy. And then you've got your your homemade duplicator back there too. Yeah. All right. So Mike, so you've got this homemade uh, duplicator for duplicating large sculptors. Yeah, Stop back this. in the mid 80s, I was going to work with the figure almost exclusively in wood. And I designed and built this kind of monster machine. Uh -huh. uh, basically, the cutter is a, a router. Yeah. This can go up and down and it can move in and out. Uh, so it would be tracing over here and cutting over here. Huh. I'm impressed. How long did it take to build that thing? This is about six months. Yeah. I believe it. <laughs> okay. And I see a little uh, smaller sandblaster. Yep. Okay. And a cart full of clamps. Looks like a good start on a nice collection of clamps there. And... Finally, these nice, not finally, but these beautiful disc sanders we were talking about a little while ago. So the one on the left there, that's a 30 inch? You yes. Said? A yeah. 30 inch and then a 24. And then you've got a nice 
spindle sander there. Very nice spindle sander. Uh, that's a brake over there? Yep. For sheet eight, metal? Eight foot sheet metal brake, 16 gauge. Wow. And then buried uh, back behind this stuff over here is your uh, time saver. And a little Makita. Yeah, tr chop saw. Um, boy, that's handy. Uh -huh. So accurate. The cuts are just gorgeous. You talk about your air, air grinders. <laughs> uh, I'm a big, big fan of air tools because one, they're lightweight, uh, mm -hmm. variable speed. You can't electrocute yourself. Not that that's too much of a worry, but you know, uh, now the body of the air tools have gotten to be where they're cheaper than the bit that you're putting in them. If uh -huh. you go to a place like Harbor Freight, they aren't great, but they aren't bad. Uh -huh. And uh, it's, it's just sort of amazing. These are Dynabraid sanders. They're just terrific. Uh, composite body, very lightweight. Um, so this just gives you a variety of uh, It looks like you abilities. got maybe 50 of them there. I think so. Yeah. yeah, and so you've got, it saves you from having, I'm assuming it's to save you from having to keep changing the bits. You got the right one right. Yeah, and what's needed. amazing is you're never just, you do one thing and you finish it, and then you need to go to the next step. You finish that and you go to the, let's say, the final step. Uh -huh. You're going back and forth all the time. Right. You know, you do a little bit of this and then you need to go back and back and back. So uh, it's just uh, right. Huge it, time saver. Time saver. Well, it's like I've got routers. I've yeah. got some routers I've got set up for a specific thing, and it took so long to set them up that yeah, I just buy another router rather than mess with the setup. On. That's right. That's the whole point. You're yeah. just trying to be efficient in your shop and. You know, you're going to be here a long time. Why not enjoy it as much as you can? Exactly. I agree with that a lot. Seven. You know, I only have seven drill presses, but eight if you count the milling machine. Okay. I'm sorry, I lied. <laughs> but this one you haven't seen work. we got to show this. Okay. Oh, boy. That's great. That that's cool great. Thing? So that's got a, what do you call it? Some kind of, a, it's like a friction drive for the variable speed. Yeah, there's a motor uh, that's turning this leather covered wheel uh -huh. and onto this hemisphere. You're moving the hemisphere, so you're going from a large diameter to a small diameter, transferring uh -huh. it to this leather covered wheel. So it's infinite var variable speed within that range. To I me, what it. a great, great it innovative is. tool. And then you got a, a few of your other drill presses set up here. Yeah, these are all set up typically if I'm doing something where I'm uh, maybe a starter <clears throat> hole or a starter drill or, you know, you've got a head of a socket uh -huh. bolt. So you can have different bits and then a countersink. You can just be a little bit more efficient. And, sure. You know, this is my normal use drill press, not a, a huge expense. These are real old and this is real cheap. Yeah. Well, time is precious, yep. right? Yep. Time is precious. All right, so let's get into the machine shop. All right, Mike, so this is your mill, vertical mill. Right, right. This is like a copy of a bridge port and uh -huh. uh, pretty much standard in every way, variable speed head mm -hmm. and a digital readout so that you just basically know where you are. And uh, if it's not locked down, so you can see exactly with the readout how much you've moved in either the X or the Y axis. Uh -huh. Now one of the interesting things about a mill is the variety of cutters that you can use. And this is a, a 3 16 cutter and this is an inch and a quarter rougher. 
Oh. So there's a fair difference in those two. <laughs> a tremendous difference. Now, uh, one of the beauties of a mill over a router, now they're an expensive piece of equipment, but I can use this for wood, steel, aluminum, stainless, uh -huh. any type of metal, more or less any type of material, plastics, right. what have you. Uh, they're way, way, way more versatile than a router could ever be. Mm -hmm. But you can this, have this huge range of, of cutting size and depth, but your, tool, your hands are off the anywhere, or not near any of the cutting action uh -huh. So You're on dials and wheels and stuff so that you're out of harm's way in a sense. I like that. And another thing, you can clamp parts directly to the table with the vise off. You can have parts in the vise or you can have parts on a rotary table. Uh -huh. So this can be moved onto here for rotating a part in either the horizontal or vertical ah. axis. And then that looks like uh, an old shearer you've got behind you this there? This is actually a press brake. Oh, that's a press brake, okay. Yeah, well used. Uh, and I managed to dump it over here in moving it into this side of the, the building. Oh, no. Uh, but uh, a, a press brake can bend uh, metal very, very precisely. Mm -hmm. And this will do four feet. But when you get into smaller segments, it can bend thicker stuff. Okay. Uh, I don't use it very much, but again, I'm a tool junkie, and when you need it, it's really, really handy. Sure, sure. Again, back to the time thing. Yeah. And then behind me here, it's like you got a nice metal lathe, and you do your wood turning on the metal lathe also. Yeah, I do. And uh, this particular lathe is from, I think, 1984. I got it used about three years ago. Okay. It had been in a machine shop. Uh, it's got a three-jaw chuck in here now. This is a real heavy-duty, serious machine. Mm -hmm. But when I bought it, one of the things I didn't even realize was how useful a collet closer is. Now, a three jaw, the, this is set up in such a way that you can actually adjust this, these jaws so that you can get dead center, uh, a part will be really concentric. Okay. Uh, but these are collets. Now right. there's, you take this whole thing off, uh, it takes about one minute to put the collet closer on. So these are very precise to hold a round piece of stock that's a small and a large. Uh huh. But this is the most accurate way of holding round stock in okay. your turning. How did you learn to use all these big fancy pieces of equipment? Just by doing it. You, it's you just, easy to see what they do and uh, you just kind of get an idea. You know, that would be very useful for this, uh -huh. good for that. And okay. It's fun to learn by trying, trial and error. Cool. All right. Well, Mike, you've got some more tools over in the other building. No, uh, we do. That you, you moved those out temporarily so you could work on your, uh, your latest project. And you've got some cool stuff over there. Let's go take a look at that stuff. All right. All right. Okay, Mike, so, so you've got, we, we just stepped out of your, your big shop and now we're, what do you call your extra building here? Well, it's just a storage building, but it okay. turned out pretty nice. It's more of a, it's as much of a gallery as a storage building. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you temporarily moved these few pieces of equipment that we weren't, like I said, so you could work on your, and what's the title of that card again? Uh, experimental. Experimental, that's a cool machine. Yeah. So, all right, so we've got behind you, you got a nice uh, old Powermatic. Yeah, this is a 16 inch uh, Powermatic uh, uh, planer. Look at the size of that thing for a 16 inch. <laughs> you know, the 16 and the 18 have exactly, everything's the same except for probably that casting. Uh huh. And I guess the base has to be wider too, but. It's gotta weigh 2,500 pounds. I don't know. It's gotta weigh a lot. Yeah, Maybe. These, these three are very heavy and uh -huh. I just needed the room for the final bit on that new sure. sculpture. Sure. This uh, joiner is an H.C. Smith from 1906. 1906. It's a two-blade uh, joiner, but it does have a round head. So it's, it's a sweet little machine, quiet castings that 
of how, course. How big is that? Like a 12 inch or? It's a 12 inch uh, cutter, but the table's 16. Okay. So it's yeah. just, they made things hefty. I see. And that, that piece back there? That's, Weissung is a shear. Uh, okay. That'll do eighth inch. It's electric and just a beautiful, beautiful machine that I got. Such a nice price. A trade, Super. really. A trade. A trade. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And then a little joiner. Okay. Well, this is Mike. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, this was uh, as brief a tour as we could get with the fabulous shop that Mike has here. So I hope you enjoyed watching this. Um, please uh, subscribe to Jack Bench. Be doing me a great favor if you do. And check out Mike's website, michaelcooper.us. Be doing yourself a great favor if you do that. So <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks.